Is getting a mortgage hard for self-employed buyers? Before we start, if you guys find this content valuable, please like or subscribe. If you strongly dislike this content, hit the dislike. Whatever, have an opinion. And if you guys have specific stuff you want me to talk about, drop it in the contents. I am here to help you get educated and empowered. Okay. Is it hard to get a mortgage as a self-employed borrower? I stuttered because in 2020 and 2021, it was, okay? I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. Self-employed loans during 2020 and 2021 were miserable. It was miserable. And the reason is, is that when COVID hit, all of a sudden, all these guidelines came raining down like acid rain. You know, um, you had to have a profit and loss. You had to have two-year history. You had to have... Um, we had to do this, you know, three months bank statements. There was a self-sufficiency calculator of doom. Like it was, it was ridiculous. Like it was ridiculous and it made it really hard for self-employed buyers. So if you're like, it's impossible, you probably talked to a lender in 2020 or 2021. And the thing that you guys need to know is the amount of work that was put on lenders to do self-employed buyers, there's a lot of lenders that just said, forget it, you know, forget it. And there's the other lenders where, you know, of course I will always help everyone that comes to me, but I wasn't actively talking about self-employed buyers because I was very concerned that it was gonna negatively impact my business because of the new guidelines, how, ridiculous and how narrow viewed they were. So the last thing I ever wanna do is tell you guys, hey, call me, call me, call me, I can do this, and then make you wanna kill me because of how ridiculous the guidelines were. And I'm being very blunt, um, as you guys know. So those guidelines have rolled back, okay? And they rolled back a little bit ago. So here's the keys about getting a self-employed, getting a mortgage when you're self-employed. Okay, now look, if it's a government loan, we're always going to want two years, very important. So as I film this, it's 2022, so I would be looking for 2020 and 2021. Okay, and if you're like, well, Jen, my business sucked in 2020, but it's great in 2021 and it's killer now, guys, I can't use this year. So that's the thing you need to know as a self-employed buyer. I can't use year to date to qualify. Very important, okay? I'm gonna be looking at that two-year history. Now, if you're like, well, shoot, I haven't filed 2021, they're not due till October, I filed an extension, or whatever the situation is, okay, I'm gonna be looking at 19 and 20. And you're like, well, wait, what if I do a profit and loss for 2021? No, guys, I can only count the income if it is on filed tax returns, period. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, that's government loans, you need two years. Conventional, you know, if you've been in business for over five years, if the computer likes you, okay, because the computer's the one that's telling us when we can get away with one year of tax returns. That is back. Thank you, baby Jesus, for bringing that back. Like, ugh, I have to tell you, 2020, 2021, still having nightmares about those self-employed guidelines. So, if the computer calls out that you only need one year tax returns, that's all we need, okay? Now, once again, if you're like, Jen, 2021 was good, but this year's amazing. Guys, if you want to use this year, you're going to have to file your taxes in 2023 and call me then, okay? It is that simple, and that is what you guys need to know. Now, there's some people who, no matter what the guidelines are, they're going to tell you, they're going to be like, you can't get a mortgage if you're self-employed. Banks hate us. No, 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 no. I want to dispel this one quickly. We don't hate you, we love you. Guys, I don't care what your income is. Every loan I do makes me money. I don't care what your income is, come on board. We don't hate you, we don't hate you, we love you. What we hate, <laughs> you knew that was coming, right? What we hate is when you, let's, when you write off all your income, right? And then you're like, but I really make. Okay, let's talk about but I really make. So if you make a million dollars and you have $900,000 worth of write-offs and no depreciation, guess what? You make $100,000. It's that simple. And what sometimes people will say is they'll go, well, you know the game. I hear that so much. You know the game. Okay, the game they're referencing is when you write off everything you can think of so you don't have to pay taxes. Those write-offs aren't real, they're partially bullshit, but they're created in order to not pay taxes. Okay, 
So here's the deal. As a lender, I know we can't play games like that. So if you give me tax returns, I have to take at face value that everything that you have said is an expense is a real expense. And even if I was crazy enough to argue to an underwriter, right? Because sometimes they're like, well, talk to your underwriter. Guys, what am I saying? Hey, Sheila. Okay. I know it looks like he had a lot of expenses, but he like made them up to not pay taxes. So can we just qualify him at a higher amount? Guys, if you're committing fraud on your taxes, do you think that makes you look sexy to a mortgage lender? Seriously, no, it doesn't. It doesn't, I get it. You don't wanna pay taxes, guess what? I don't either, but as my dad tells me every single year when I'm paying taxes, Jenny, it is a blessing to be able to complain about paying taxes. Many people do not have the ability to complain about that because they are barely getting by. Take that with a grain of salt, right? Dad keeps it real. So that's the deal. If you guys wanna get a mortgage, absolutely no problem. Self-employment, super duper easy. It's just critical that you know that we are gonna take your tax returns at face value. So keep that in mind. Um, what else is so important about self-employed? Oh, I get this one a lot. So a lot of times people will be like, oh, I'm not self-employed, I'm W2'd because they own a company that W2's them. Guess what, guys? If you own over 25% of that company, you're an owner. We're gonna want your business tax returns, we're gonna want your personal tax returns. I don't care if you W2 yourself, what you do with yourself. If you own over 25% of that business, you are an owner. So it's critical to know because what happens is, and I don't know if there's like a tax channel or someone's telling people, no, 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 just give the lender your W2s and everything else will keep on the DL. No, and the reason why the lender's gonna look at those business tax returns is because sometimes what people will do is they'll do their business tax returns, they'll pay themselves fat W-2s, and then they'll have a loss on that business. Well, guess what? If you own the business 100% and you're paying yourself a million dollars and it has a million dollar loss, guess what? Zero again. Okay, so the important thing to know is that we are gonna look at your tax returns. We're gonna analyze them. I always tell people because people will call, they'll say, what do I need to show on my tax returns? Okay, so important you guys know this. Guys, lenders can lose their licenses for answering that question because it's considered manipulation of data. No joke, like I know of a loan officer who actually lost their license because they told the, the buyer, hey, if you wanna get a house for XYZ, you need to show at least XYZ on your taxes. No joke. No joke, it's, it's serious, for real. No one on my team is ever gonna tell you what you need to put on your taxes. So if you're like, well, I'll book a call and you can tell, no, never gonna tell you. And it's because we are not gonna manipulate data and if we give you that number, we are helping to manipulate data because you're saying what numbers do I have to show, we're telling you and then you're showing those numbers based on what we said. It's manipulation of data. So the bottom line is, be honest and ethical with your taxes. That's it. Because here's the thing, if you follow your taxes, file, excuse me, without the BS, without all the creativity, that will actually show us what you really qualify for. And the key as a lender is we wanna make sure that you can get into a house you can afford. So sometimes people go the reverse where they don't write off anything because they really wanna get a more expensive house. Well, guess what? If you have real expenses and you don't write them off and you get that more expensive house, how are you gonna pay for it when you're paying those real expenses? Right, right. In life, it is so much easier to be honest. It really, really is. Like, you sleep well at night, you know, the way things carve out is the way they're supposed to be, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate on this video from people that are like, you just want the, is the government IRS paying you to do this video? No, guys, I'm just telling you. I've been doing this for a long time. I see it go every way. Honest and ethical on your tax returns. Totally you can get a house, you know. That's the way to go. So as always, I hope this video has been helpful. Look, guys, if you're self-employed and you're not writing everything off or playing tax games, we are more than happy to help. I work with a lot of business owners. You know, I've been really happy to help them grow their real estate portfolios with planning and making sure everything works. But the key is you just wanna be transparent, okay? So I'm licensed in 48 states to do mortgages everywhere but Rhode Island and Utah. Reach out. There'll be a link to the calendar. My phone number is somewhere here. Thanks for watching, guys.